I wanted to make a video about this 3-bit adder I've been constructing recently. Um, I was I became interested in what it took to make these things out of transistors after some posts on the Reddit Ben Eater community. I thought I could see some ways to re remove some of the transistors, um, so I thought I'd, I'd have a go at that. I'm, I'm not the best person at making things out of transistors. I usually go for TTL logic, which is far easier to plug things together without having odd results. Uh, but this was fun, trying to work out how to get the right resistors in the right places so that things didn't just go weird under certain in input conditions, um, and making sure I had a better understanding of actually how the transistors worked. So this is what it's like with the power on. As you can see, uh, the inputs are all set low over here. This is the low bit of each of the two numbers to be added. This is the middle bit and this is the high bit for each of those two numbers. So those are all zero at the moment uh, and the low bit of the output is off, the middle bit of the output is off, the high bit of the output is off and the inverted carry is lit. Uh, obviously it's an inverted carry so it being lit means there is no carry. Uh, as you'd expect if I put either of the low bits on then the low output, sorry, either of the low input bits on, then the low output bit comes on as well. And if they're both on, that carries through to the middle output bit. Uh, set them off again. Same deal in the middle bits. If either of them is on, then that middle output bit gets lit over here. And if they're both on, then that carries through to the high output bit down here. Uh, and if only one of those is on and a carry comes from the lower bit that obviously propagates up and once again it propagates all the way through so that the high bit is now on. So this sum now equates to 1 for one of the inputs and 3 for the other one and the output result is 4, just to be clear. Uh, let's pop them back off again and uh, obviously the same situation is also true for the, the highest bit. If either of the inputs has the high bit set, then that final green LED there comes on. And if they're both set, then that final LED will come on as, will, will go off again. Uh, and the carry LED will go off because now there will be a carry and this is an inverted carry indication. So it being off means that there was a carry that would fall through to the next bit if I bothered to make that. Um, and yeah, just for fun, we can, we can turn all of them on and you know show all of the propagation working there. What you end up with is seven plus seven being f sorry, is this seven? Yeah, this is seven plus seven being fourteen, uh, and the f the high bit here, the carry would equate to eight. Uh, eight being off means that we should have eight to six makes fourteen, so that is correct. In terms of general structure, the top row covers the low bit of the sum, the middle row covers the middle bit, and the bottom row covers the high bit of the three three bit sum. This module right at the top here, this construction of five transistors in a little loopy pattern there, these are NPN transistors forming a ZOR gate. Um, it's actually an XNOR gate, not a XOR gate, uh, because the output is inverted, uh, and that last transistor on the end actually inverts that back again to drive the LED. I don't really consider that part of the gate, it's more of a detail of how you interpret the output. Uh, you can see the orange wire coming from the middle there, that's actually pulling out a carry output. Um, the way you do this in the half adder is the output bit is the exclusive OR of the two input bits and the carry is the AND of the two input bits. And because the exclusive OR gate starts with an AND gate, it's really easy just to pull that output from there instead of having to recreate a separate AND gate in addition to the exclusive OR gate. So that was one of the main things I wanted to try out here, was seeing how well I could make that work. That top row only contains a half adder because it doesn't support, uh, it doesn't support adding any carry bit in at that stage. Most, most real-world adders would support a carry just in case you were cascading them. I didn't build that here, um, so this doesn't support that, but the second bit down here, the middle bit, does have an NPN half adder, just like on the top row, followed by a PNP copy of the same half adder. 
uh, this PNP copy is exactly inverted, so it's like you took the entire circuit diagram and turned it upside down. Um, all of the connections to ground now go to the positive rail, and all the connections to the positive rail now go to ground. All the transistors are the other way up. Um, although, yeah, the, the emitter and collector are a bit confusingly named for PNP transistors, I find. But yeah, technically they're, they're sort of on the other side of the circuit now. And what it means is that that second half adder basically takes inverted inputs and gives inverted outputs compared to the first half adder. Now remember that the first half adder actually was already giving an inverted output bit uh, and that carry I've taken from the middle of it is actually a, an inverted carry as well. Um, the result is that this second PNP based half adder actually produces a non-inverted sum output at the end of the day which I can just pass straight into that LED through through an emitter follower over here. So there's no inverting going on with that sort of LED amplification phase. And the inverted output from the first half adder is perfectly suitable to go straight into that PNP half adder because the PNP half adder is expecting inverted inputs. Uh, and again, that carry input coming from the first bit is also inverted, so perfect. That, that all worked pretty well, and I think it removed some potential glue transistors from the middle. Maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, I did have to also combine the two carry outputs from the first and second half adder of this row uh, with uh, an NPN and a PNP transistor there. They are opposite senses, one of them is an inverted carry, the other one's a non-inverted carry, hence the different types of transistor in this comp uh, sort of combination here. And the, the, the end result here, I, need, I had to just figure it out to make this be an inverted carry through to the next stage, just because that's just what the PNP uh, half adder down there needs as well. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a struggle putting it together. I'm not great with analog electronics. Um, I know this is a digital sum, but with the transistors involved and the currents and resistors, it does turn into an analog problem. Um, and I haven't had a lot of practice at dealing with those. So yeah, I was, I was pretty pleased to get that working. Um, I quite like the fact it is fairly symmetrical in its use of NPN and PNP transistors. It meant that I didn't run out because uh, I had a, about equal numbers of both. Um, so yeah, I'll post a circuit diagram as well uh, in case anyone's interested in how that works. Um, but it's not like I'd recommend this circuit particularly. I'm sure there are much better ways of doing this. Um, I think diode transistor logic is probably a lot more efficient than transistor transistor logic when you're building it from discrete parts like this. You could build an exclusive OR gate with just four diodes and a transistor, so uh, that's going to be a lot more compact for sure. Uh, but I wanted to do it with just transistors here, so there we are. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope this was interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know if there are any questions.